Continue. Uh oh. I, yeah. It's recording, so I think we're good. Okay. Hi, uh, Kat. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us in Talasan's podcast. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I was really excited about that. Uh, we obviously uh, we we met before. We talked a little bit about all the the amazing things you do uh, for the Red Sea. And uh, again, I'm just really grateful and thankful uh, for this opportunity that you came out here and decided to share your story with uh, with everyone. Cool. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me having a time with you. And um, thank you for your work. It's very adorable and is needed on this world, especially. Um, it's a pleasure. Yes, we met before. It's super nice, and let's meet more people because it would be Absolutely. better. Absolutely. So, we have in common at least the Red Sea. So, yes. You can yes absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, so as we kind of discussed, we first wanted I wanted to ask you a little bit about your life. Um, Obviously, you didn't. Uh, you were not. You you came from outside of Egypt. So, uh, how did you how did you get here? What made you decide to look at the Red Sea like that? Uh, what's your life experience in general like? How how yeah? How did we come here? Uh, it would be a little crazy, but I came to the hub because of a dream. Um, I was dreaming about a blue, and this blue was driving me crazy. And more I was dreaming, more this dream looked like so real. So to understand this dream, I'm coming from scuba diving. So I started scuba diving when I was young. It was uh, my parents, they bring me to this world because I grew up on the sailboat. I grew up the, already in the water. So it's already a connection that I got from my parents, thanks to them, it's very lovely. And after that, when I was a teenager, my dad brought me in the scuba world. So I started to scuba and all my vacation for almost 15 years was always related to the water, to go to scuba and scuba and scuba. And I can say the last eight years of my life in Canada, because I come from Canada, it was completely perfect for the society. So I was having a beautiful relationship with someone. I was having a good job. I was having a good family. I, I loved them. I was having a really amazing, wonderful friend. All the life was perfect to be on the stem door, but something was missing. And each year with the, with the boyfriend at the time, we were traveling for scuba diving. And one time we chose a destination that we were supposed to go, but I didn't like so much this place because we've been there already. So. It was just like, yeah, I love you. I will follow you everywhere in the world and the water, but I don't want to go there anymore because I, I don't like this place and I don't find myself there. So for a common uh, for a common decision, we decided that we will travel separately. He will go on his travel and I will do mine. And I didn't know where it was, but at this time I started to dream about a blue, a blue that I never saw. And I travel a lot. I have more than 2,000 scuba dives. Um, I have more than 14 years scuba diving experience. Um, I came from the pool for free diving. Now I'm scuba, uh, I'm free diving too as well. So. It's a blue that I never saw. So by making decision, I don't want to go in the Caribbean. I don't want to be in Asia again. I want something different. I want something where I can be alone because I was traveling alone. So by handing, I figured out that it was Dahab. I don't know how, but I figured out that my dream was Dahab because I was seeing the blue and I was seeing the mountain and I was seeing, and I don't like to sound this way, but I was seeing like black kids but the black kids actually is the Bedouin. So this was a dream like October, September, and October. And on the same day, after all the process and figure out where it was, on the same day, I drive the boyfriend at the time to the airport. I came back home. I took 20 kilo. I make my luggage and I left. And this was most than three years ago. So I left everything behind me. 
um, the job, the boyfriend, the house, the family, um, everything. I just left my pack back. And everything was like, I'm going for free diving because I wanted to be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good in school bus. I wanted to reach the same level in free dive. And when I arrived at Taha, it was like, oh, okay, it's not the same game. It need a little more time to free dive. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. so, more the time was passing, more I realized that the blue, because I arrived like end of uh, winter here, so more I realized that, oh, the blue is here. The mountain that I saw in my dream are actually the Sinai and the kids, but they are the Bedouins. So everything is was making more sense to me and more the day was passing became the week and the week became months and now it's more than three years I am in that house. So, <laughs> so that's how I came here. Um, I came here literally for the diving. I came here for the beauty of this country. Um, more I'm staying here and more I want to be involved and more I want to see and more I want to travel. Uh, I'm super happy because I have beautiful opportunity to meet people like you, to meet people everywhere I'm traveling and more I meet people, more it's giving me idea and thing to see and thing to do and the list to enjoy the Red Sea is just getting longer and longer and longer. So I'm already happy that my dream bring me here. <laughs> <laughs> for that Amazing. so basically how i discovered that app. i had no idea where it was i have no idea how it was working i didn't did any research because i didn't want to have any expectation and when i arrived here it was like okay there it is so yeah so i bet with myself that i will stay here and i will try to do the best as i can because i'm coming from a good country that we do recycling that we do everything well to help the nature and here of course opportunity is a shock because we have nothing we have no education no conservation no making how to do the recycling how to use all those trust how to save it and how to make this opportunity to make something better with uh, because it was a shock when i meet people especially when i met the big wings that they are more or less the same age as me that they never saw plastic before. So it's very interesting to see like few generation when, I'm sorry, I don't care about the story, who below to who and the lens and everything, but it's very interesting that in the lifestyle, especially now in 2021, that people didn't saw plastic before. It's wow, like how is possible? Yeah. And then how is possible that now I go in the water and I swim and each day I can remove between one to 10 kilo of trash in the ocean. So how this change make in so short time. So what we can do from that, um, I think is giving more, giving me more power to help and to be here and to, to have a little impact how to make this world better. Because for me it's job, like it's my job to go in the water but it's my job to help and it's my job to clean it because it's my office and I don't like to see my office dirty. I don't like to see how it can be so much better because people are coming to Egypt. Yeah, they are coming as a tourist, but the main income of the Egypt is the Red Sea, is the diving. So yes, of course, people want to see the pyramid and stuff. It's, for sure, it's beautiful too, but the water, the water drives people crazy here. This blue is amazing. It's one of the best places all around the world. And it's interesting because the Red Sea is one of the only places still growing, even with the trash, even with the change, even with the climate changing, even with everything. The Red Sea is the nursery for a lot of fishes and it's still growing each year. So we have to take this in consideration and we have to help and we have to do something better to at least maybe see something in human life again. Cool. Cool. That's, uh, that was amazing to you. You literally came to Egypt following a dream, like, li like <laughs> literally following a dream, <laughs> yeah. which, which is, which is amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, and and then and then when you were coming, you said you didn't really know when you were coming back. So maybe you were coming just for a short vacation, and then when you saw the 
the sea, when you saw the mountains, you figured, okay, this is where I should be right now. Mm, it took me a few weeks to understand because if, let's say, the first few weeks and stuff, the like months, especially months, because I arrived in winter, uh, it was a big, big step in my life to, to quit everything. So it, like the first month, the first month I, I touched a few times the water, but I, I didn't feel the connection. So I was waiting for it. So during this time, uh, I passed a lot of time outside of the water and I was doing volunteering with one doctor. She's called Dr. Amira. She's the only veterinary here in Dahab. Um, thanks to her, she trusts me. She helped me a lot. It was my first integration and because I never came to Arabic world. I never traveled in the okay. Middle East or something. So, you know, coming from America and you are like in Egypt, it's like, it's something uh, very cliche and you're close to Israel and you're like in the Middle East and Saudi is in front of you. So it's something big, let's say. So, and I didn't have any experience in Arabic world. So with Dr. Hamira, she was really sweet with me. She was really nice. I, I gave her a month of my, of my time and it was really a slow integration because I was able to ask her a lot of questions and I trust her, she trusts me. So I help her a lot with the animal at the time. And then after that, I, I was feeling, okay, it's it's better. I can go and, and diving. Then I met a lot of nice body. I started to train and free diving and I realized that, okay, like something is there and I want to stay longer. And then the first few months I observed, and after that I work in scuba diving to pay my life and from free diving. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all uh, paradoxal, but yeah, because um, I was in scuba instructor, so it was making sense to to do it. And this is was two years ago. So since two years now, I'm teaching only free diving. Um, I love it. It's nice. So I found something that I, I love to share my passion. And from there, like a lot of door open. So I did a lot of shooting. I did a lot of advertising for the Red Sea too. I meet amazing people. I have our collaboration all around the world. And it was just like, woo. And I enjoy Egypt a lot. I was traveling not only in Dahab and in Sharm, but I, I've been in so many other different places too. So it was really uh, was worth it to stay here to observe, and now from what I learn, I can do something. So I create my own school on the same time, and now I can I can live from that. So it's okay, right on. right on, right on, cool stuff. Okay, so I wanted to ask you. So right now, is that is it free diving? Is that exactly what you do? Is that what you do full time? Do you do anything next to it or? Um, is it just free dive? I'm very lazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's good for free dive. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, because, um, unfortunately, I came from a really bad experience of free diving. My first real instructor was really, really um, bad instructor because now I am so I can judge. Uh, but at the beginning, when I learned freediving, it wasn't a good experience. So I want to offer the best as I can as a teacher, as an instructor. So I take my time. So when I'm teaching, I prefer to give more and stay longer and have more information. That's what is the common standard to do. And I just, I don't care about the course. I don't care if people are doing the requirement or something. I just want them, them sorry, to have good experience. So basically daily i am all the time in the water and when i'm off or when i can i teach that i teach yoga too as well so it's related you don't need to do yoga to free dive or you don't need to free dive to do yoga but they have a lot of comments and i can say the same with climbing because living in the sinai is amazing and the rock climbing and climbing here is beautiful so i'm doing climbing too on some days off <laughs> when it's possible um, hiking, exploring the Sinai, if not swimming, or we have like two gym open areas, so it's super nice. But mainly, I have a goal with myself that each day I have to touch the water, even if I just dip my feet in. 
But <laughs> so yeah, free diving. I do scuba diving only for dive cleanup now. So okay. I I don't I don't teach. I do only dive for fun. But if I have to dive, I will do dive cleanup because here in Dahab we have weekly some dive. So it's super nice. Many dive center they do in different area or different day. So uh, yeah, I just joined and I can do a dive cleanup and it's nice for everyone. So I still breathe on the water. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I actually did one of those one of those cleanup dives before, and uh, there is so much. You see a lot of trash on the on the sea on the sea floor. Especially after like seasons and stuff, because I did one and I couldn't believe uh, how many um, how many plastic bottles and just everything that were that were on the sea floor. Yeah, it's it's quite uh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, and let's say like le, for my birthday, it was last month for my birthday. A lot of people was asking me like, oh, what to do and what do you want for your birthday. So a dear friend, um, she's called Nana. She was doing the same too last year and we do this year too. We do a birthday cleanup. So instead of doing a celebration or something, we just organize one afternoon and it's like, okay, today it's my birthday and let's go to clean the sea. So people are just welcome to join. Uh, I'm, I'm close with the Bedouin community here. So a few of them join, few people join too. And we can see so much trash. And unfortunately, especially this Garrett Bot, um, one dive center here, they, they do have each week. And each week is more than 500. I know that they, because they come down to have like the amount, if it's getting better or if it's getting worse. Yeah, growing, increasing, yeah. To, to have some data, to have like some, yeah, some data at the end of the, the month to see. And each week they have this time. I mean, it was the same when we did this dive cleanup. It's the same everywhere. Like you can just sometimes swim. And by swimming, all my swimwear, they are, they are all too big because I put so much trash inside them. So by swimming, just, just by swimming, uh, staying at the surface, we're talking about the mask and the snorkel, it's already a lot to pick it up. So diving down and having like the current and yes, unfortunately, when we have the celebration is bring more and more and more. So yeah, we need, we need, we need more education from outside to have less to pick up inside the water. But a lot of people are doing really great job to, to try to make the advertising. It's part of the culture, it's part of the education, but slowly, slowly to try to make the example and to educate people how to, you don't need this plastic bag, you don't need to buy this thing, you don't need to consume that much. You can just reuse, um, you can just try to do it again, or I mean, one bottle example one bottle of plastic of water you can all the time fill it up you you don't need to buy one each time yeah. yeah you don't need to carry this plastic bottle and the plastic bag you have your hand you have a backpack you have like you have so many options and from my point of view coming from a big beautiful country uh, that everything is nice here um i think it's so easy for 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 me, the iPhone is so accessible to be vegan because vegan is not only a way of eating, vegan is a way of living. So example, recycling, this is the cashew, but this is a jar that we are using a few times before. So iPhone is super useful here, and especially in the Sinai that you can re recycling all the time, everything. So, for, and it's, it's so small. It's so small movement, but it can make the big difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I, I kind of wanted to also ask you. So, a dream is, is is what brought you to Egypt. But what what happened in your life that kind of that kind of ignited something in you that you felt like? Because from what I understand, you feel like it's it's your mission, it's your job to help keep the sea clean. What what? What sparked that idea? What happened that made you say, 
this is this is something that's for me that I need to take action on or that I need to do. Do you, do you know what I mean? Because for a few reasons, honestly, I'm I'm a curious person, so I I love to understand and I love to see and I love to be involved. Um, I'm very thankful because Egypt is a country who welcomed me here. I can say I am an immigrant here and I want to give back this. So from my point of view, what I can do is to help with the knowledge I have, with the accessibility and with the, um, the power I get. Let's say I'm getting having more and more sponsor. I'm having more influence. I'm having a lot of um, let's say, of influence, and people are coming to dive with me and to see me. So what I want to do from that is to show to people that if me, I can do something, everyone can do something by helping. Why? Because it's, it's beautiful, it's nature, and it's not, it should not be that much sad. It should not be having so much trash and having like good quality of diving. And seeing the beauty of the Red Sea, it's, yeah, I think that's why I want to give back on this way. I want to offer because it's not normal. In three years, I saw how the reef is destroyed. I saw so many plastic. I saw so many things that it's small act, it's small, small stuff. We, when I was, for example, when I was in Bali, they have like one plastic, one plastic trash plastic. It's called trash bag. A trash bag, it's made by a local person there that he create plastic bag from the net and you can wear everywhere on your club, on your hips, on your back. It's super nice and you just pick it up some plastic. So they have like so much small idea like this that we can be involved. And here we are so many diving instructors, free diving instructors. So many people are coming just for diving. So if people have a bad idea like oh the red sea yeah it's egypt it's trash it's disgusting yeah it is but we can do something much better than that because that's the reason why you're coming here for the beauty for the clear for the accessibility for the water you have no current you have amazing visibility like especially here in the sinai all the red sea but especially in the sinai ras mohammed is one of the top 10 the most beautiful place so it, we keep, we have to keep this beauty. We have to help because the fish, unfortunately, yeah, they can eat the, the trash, but they will die. We don't have to do that. We have to help them. So it's what I want to give. And, and being here in Dahab and the Sinai and having this connection mm -hmm. with Bedouins, they are amazing. They are connected with the nature. They teach me a lot. So by them i learned because I, I bring them in the water with me i love that <laughs> and I, I love to have this connection this is something too when i arrived three years ago it was super sad um, because one dad he found his son dead in the water so it was super super sad and i wasn't an instructor at the time i was i was just diver and i heard this story and I, I was feeling guilty. I was feeling very sad. I didn't know this person. I don't know this family at all, but I found it was so sad as a parent to found his children. And unfortunately, the, the, the kid was diving alone and he didn't make a proper, di a proper dive. So that's why he passed away. So I, from that, it was from behind in my mind. I didn't know what will happen in my life, but I was like, okay, I need to help. I need to do something because I don't want to hurt that again if I'm staying here. I don't want to have this situation. So now I have a few Bedouins that I take I take them in the water with me. I teach them free diving. I teach them at least for the safety, how to act, how to be. And they are amazing in the water. They teach me. They teach me a lot. So it's just by sharing the experience, sharing time and even for them is seeing the, oh, so much pollution it's for them it's the food is the living is the connection so they can see a lot of change in the last 10 years so trying to help them to make them better in the water and they give me back to they help a lot with the pollution so it's small act saying like oh the fish net is stuck in the reef instead of leaving it there they have to remove, remove it, it. So yeah. they have they have to ask help for that. 
Um, they put a lot of trash, few scuba center, they remove the tire, they remove the big piece of the water because the, it's not, should not be low to there. I'll be there, so, yeah. Yeah. But, but it, it's, it's very interesting how we can collaborate together and make this, because we have this connection and we want the best for the nature, and especially with them, it's, it's amazing for that. Of course, it's it's their home too. They've been there for so long, so uh, they definitely they definitely always have the the, the idea to, to protect it, and uh, and it's 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 really good that we're we're empowering uh, or you're helping empower them with the right education, so they can they can safely dive or or understand about nature, and then vice versa, because they have been around for generations, so they know things about. Uh, they know things about the land, about the Sinai land that none of us would ever uh, would ever even think of or, or know about. Um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. Okay, so I kind of wanted to also ask you about. Uh, so you came you came from from Canada to Egypt. I I'm a guy that lived in, in both countries, and I I know how different life is between these two countries it's like night and day so i kind of wanted i was curious about some of the maybe the challenges that you might had um or that or that you overcame uh in the past in the past few years in egypt and, and that could be that could be anything but what what were some moments that you felt like okay this was a big challenge and i and i kind of went over it uh or or not oh 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 if uh, <laughs> all the challenge I came here almost because my plan was to stay here only a few weeks. So I didn't have that much money. So I have to find a way to survive. <laughs> so this was the first challenge. <laughs> um, second, though, I didn't speak English. Or I didn't speak Arabic at all. So you can ask many friends around, but the yeah. first few weeks, months. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Um, Just, uh, sign, sign language, maybe sign language. <laughs> Where do I get food? <laughs> food or wait, wait. <laughs> um, in a lot, honestly, everything was challenging at the beginning. Coming here without friends, without the boyfriend, without the family, without almost yeah, I, I had few saving, but not for three years. <laughs> um, um, without nothing. So if me, I can do all those challenge. Everyone can do it. And then it's facing the reality here. It's facing the culture. It's facing the education. It's facing everything mm -hmm. because for us from Canada, from America, everything is so easy. So I want water, I just open the sink. Here, no, I cannot. If I do that, I will be on the hospital. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's facing a lot of things that can be involved and can be so much better in this world, not for foreigner, but for everyone. So if Canada, America, Europe have this opportunity to make this world better, I think here too, I think each country that unfortunately we see it's the third world, it's not, but each country that is under a big control of another country can be so much accessible just to make the life better for everyone. So I don't, I don't believe that someone who is more rich or poor shouldn't have access to the water. So it's all facing all those things. Um, I understand and I agree that living in the Sinai is not Egypt. Um, living with the Bedouins and living here is completely different. So, but I do respect a lot this country. I do respect the culture, the religion and everything. So, of course, if I'm traveling in Egypt, I observe a lot. I, I cover myself. Uh, I respect what is how it should be. Um, and yeah, everything is... It's just adaptation, but I'm lazy. I'm easy going. <laughs> so each, each challenge, it's different. Each day is different. Accepting everything, seeing different. As I said at the beginning, um, I'm a, it's me. Now it's my turn. I am an immigrant in this country, so I have to respect and show respect and to understand and live how this country show his life here so i don't 
sometimes yes it's challenging <laughs> for sure but it's beautiful i think it wasn't easy and it's not easy but it's the beauty of living here in one part and i think as egyptian some days i ate it and some days is the best days of my life so oh. <laughs> That's it's that's usually life. how it goes. Yeah, that's usually how it goes out here. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So in the past, in the past three years, coming back to kind of like the challenge. So since you came to Egypt, did anything ever, or did you ever have one of those like harder days or or a very challenging days that almost made you say like, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Or did did anything ever happen, or did you ever have? um a situation or a moment that made you like this is too much i can't handle this anymore or uh, but but maybe after you, you went back to it and you're like no i got this um uh, but yeah did did you have any of those moments unfortunately yes um i had this few times in the water few dive center or a few place that I visit or they offer me job to stay or to create free diving and new area that some place don't have in the south let's say they offer me job and when I go in the water and I see one example um Abu Dhabi beach like you you have a bay over there they have more than 47 turtle that they are living there all years so that means you go in the water and you can see them for sure it's almost guaranteed that you will see at least one two they are there when you go in the water and you have the guide that is chasing the turtle grab it you go in the front to take some picture to show to the customer behind that they are really bad swimmer or they are scared to be in the water they have the mask in the face they are with the life jacket they are screaming to each other they are chasing the turtle they are changing the way when i see that uh, i don't want to see that i'm not the police for the ocean of course but after one and then two minutes after you have another group and two minutes after you have another group and then you have like 20 people and then you look around you it's not 20 people it's 200 person around you and no one know how to behave in the water and everyone want to touch the turtle and everyone want to grab her and everyone is chasing her so when you see that for me it's broken heart it is and it's and it's sad because it's not coming from the people people want to enjoy this the, the vacation want to have the fucking stupid picture sorry with this turtle or with the dolphin or something so but the job the job is to the guide because if you make money now because you have 20 people but if the turtle die after that tomorrow you will have no more turtle and the day after maybe another one will die and die so in two years you will have no more turtle no more tourists no more job no more money so for this i think it's really important to create the awareness to create the education and to explain that if you stay calm in the water even if you don't know how to swim we can help you we can but by being calm by being how to educate the people and how to show it's much it's much enjoyable for everyone but this lack of education here this problem is so major it's so big because people are all the time rushed and they want that and especially now living in social media living on instagram living on and everything, everyone wants to have this shot, this moment to show up and stuff. So when I saw this, unfortunately, yes, I'm thinking a lot like what what the fuck I'm doing here, how I can help, or why I'm seeing that. It's happened at least five times and I have like job offer and I saw this kind of situation with turtle, with dolphin, with the dugong, and even here in the Sinai is like we want to dive and it's happened for me personally last year too i was supposed to swim a really long distance to create the awareness about the plastic and the goal of this swim is to offer a container to the bedrooms that this container is recycling the plastic so from this plastic they are making some blood and with the blood you can create school house whenever but you can create something with unfortunately a week before this long swim because it was involved with a lot of people and it was taking a lot of time to train for it because if you swim 30 kilometer it's at least 10 12 hours during your day it's very long and a week 
a week before this event, some stupid people, they was on the boat and they go far away in the blue. So first of all, it's dangerous. Second of all, they put food in the water. And third, they put people in the water to see the shark. But the shark, they are free. They are below the ocean. They are natural there. What's happened? The shark bite three people. No one died, but unfortunately, people get bite. What they do? They close Ras Mohammed and they close everything to the water for a few weeks. This happened a week before my personal swim. So, of course, those days, those situations like this, it's like, why? Why? Like, what is going on? Why people don't have the education? And even worse than that, they close it and they start to kill shark because it's shark the problem. But it's not shark the problem. It's the people the problem. Why, first of all, you go in the blue? Why you put food and then you put people and children in the water? We are nature. We have to collaborate with. We have to take example of. But we don't have to fight and to kill and to be better. We are not on the top of the chain. We are not. We are the last one. So if we don't take advantage of that, if we're not slowly responsible, I don't think it's going to be worth it. So for that, yes, it's really hard to live here. It's really hard to understand this kind of mentality. But overall, I hope to do better. It's what I'm doing. I show the education. I show how to behave in the water. You have amazing place in this world that is completely unique. And it's called Sataya. It's the only place that you can do and see with the dolphin. If you don't know how to behave, they will not come to you. They will not act naturally. But the last trip, I was so proud of my people because I did a really beautiful breeding to them. And then I explained everything. And then the daily boat arrived and they saw how the guide from over there, they were just dropping literally the people in the front of the dolphin. And we were on the sailboat, we were observing. And all my people was like, wow, we understand now. Like, we are so shamed. I don't want to go again in the water. I don't want to because I, I feel bad for the dolphin and everyone understand. Everyone, I didn't have to say nothing because people believe it and they saw it. So when they saw the bad behavior, when they saw what it was going on, they, they were just so, so sad and it's normal. And I think, and I think unfortunately, if everyone can have this awareness and especially guide here, it's your job. Like if you want to work with tourists, show by the example how to behave. And people will be so much more happy and respectful and have better experience and not rushing and not destroying and not killing. So this, yes, of course, some days <laughs> put me in the next plane, please. <laughs> but some days it's like when I, I see, when I can do small education like this and I see that people are receptive and they, they can speak after that because Something bad, unfortunately, yeah, the brain is working all the time on negative ways. So it's easy to, to say bullshit. It's easy to, oh, yeah, I did that, I did that, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's easy. But when you show the good, it takes more awareness and more conscious. And then people realize and they want to do something better. So for me, that's why I feel I, I need to stay here. And I want to stay here because it's not normal that I cannot enjoy I came here for this beauty. I came here to enjoy it. So if I can do that and have a little impact, yes, we can make this world better. And and to also talk about to talk about when when you, when you talked about the the thing that happened with Ras Muhammad and how it was simple as oh yeah let's let's throw some some uh, food in the water so we so we can see the sharks. It's like we're not supposed to be in control w with that stuff, right? Like. We're there. We're there to observe it. We can't attempt to change their behavior, and we're definitely not on top of the food chain. I almost think of it that if if a small animal like the phytoplankton, for example, in the sea, if that microscopic being disappears, we're not going to have any oxygen. The world is not going to have any oxygen. But if humans disappear, the earth is going to be just fine. You know, <laughs> nothing is going to happen. Everything is going to flow smoothly. I don't think we're even in the food chain, right? We're kind of like, yeah, so it's uh, it's really sad when when we act or when, and, and I specifically agree with you with guides, because these guides are supposed to be the, 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 the people that 
show the, the regular, yeah, they, they show the regular people that never been to the sea or their first time or maybe their second time or people that are, are a little bit scared or weary of it. They're supposed to show them this is how this is how we treat the, the animals. This is how we, uh, we interact with them. We shouldn't we shouldn't be running after the turtle because eventually it will it will leave. No one wants no one wants to, to feel like someone is following them all the time, right? Or or even in, in, in dives or whatever, when people in night dives and they, they open a flashlight on yeah. a fish, and then there is like 25 people with a flashlight on the on the moray eel or whatever, and it's like, guys, like th think of the eel. You know what I mean? What would it feel if you're just chilling one night and then there's 25 people like staring at you for <laughs> it's like <laughs> It's more easy for people to understand from outside of the water because you're so used to see like in the mountain and in the sky on land and everything. But being on the water is still a mystical world. So I agree, we should not do nothing. And, and especially now with the COVID, with the COVID we saw, we saw here how it was much better because we had like less boat traffic. We had less people coming out of water. So last year I was super lucky. I saw the sailfish few times. I saw the whale shark. I saw eagle. I saw a lot of thing in the water only by swimming. So I agree that if we remove human, <laughs> it will not happen. <laughs> but, but on the second hand, uh, fortunately with COVID, of course it's more consumed consumption of plastic is more trash, is more single use for your healthy, healthy, yeah, for, for saving, for being more, less contamination and stuff, but it's not the ocean have to eat up of all this behavior. So I agree completely with you for that. So, yes, but with small, with small movement, with small, I think each, each movement you're doing, each thing, example, for, my, for me, I get a lot of sponsor because I'm spending a lot of time in the water. So all my swimwear that I'm wearing all the time for my picture and everything is only made by recycling. So everything that I'm using is coming from the trash and is recycling material for the ocean. So it's small movement, it's slow fashion. But unfortunately, it can help somehow it helps. to show the yeah. example. So with all of those small things, I, I believe that we can do better. I believe that if people can have better briefing to how to just behave, even in scuba diving, even in free dive, even just for snorkeling, if we educate the people how to behave, how to hack, how to be more relaxed, because you will never win in the water. We are not Poseidon, we are not yeah. the king of the death or something. So knowing how to move or just how to breathe, it's so much, much better for everyone and enjoyable. Absolutely. So we, we talked a little bit about a moment that made you uh, feel like you wanted to kind of like say, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. On, on the other hand, did you ever have a moment that gave you the, the reassurance that like, okay, no, this is it. This is what I want to be uh, doing. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Maybe we can talk a little bit about these moments because they're usually really exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, try, I try daily to, to enjoy it somehow, like just by living, by having a smile or something, but Let's say two weeks ago when I was in Sataya, like I had one of the best four minutes of my life with a dolphin. Like the connection, he was playing with me, turning around, like we are looking at each other without touching, of course, but it was so close, I can hug him. It was so beautiful. You have eye contact, you you feel that okay, you play, follow you and stuff. So yes, I have those moments, and those moments is why I'm here. Those moments when I see when I go on the water, when I am with the Bedouins and they're coming up to the surface, the smile they give to me, all my customers, when they are happy to dive, and it's like, wow, they are so happy. Yes, of course, I want to stay here. I want to improve that. I want to have more of that. And I want to, for me, it's my pain. For me, it's my joy of life. I love to share this passion. I'm thankful because I have a lot of experience and I can, I can show, but 
it's all around the world. And living here, it's the Red Sea drives me crazy. So yeah, yeah each time I am happy, I, I saw the whale shark passing, I saw even an eagle or even a turtle. Yeah, it's a small pleasure of life that that's why I'm here. So yeah, I don't. Amazing. When I have dogs, and I can have both on the same day. I can have like two minutes before I go to swim. I'm fighting with someone because I see how the trash is throwing away from the restaurant, for example, here in Dahab. It's the waiter. He just pick it up the trash and he leave in the ocean. And it's like, man, what are you doing? Like you have customer, you do that in the front of the customer, you pick it up and then he fight with you because you are the problem because you are a woman, you're white, and you should not do that, and you should not talk to him on this way, and you are the problem, and then you go to swim to forget all those bullshit that he's telling you, and all this trouble, and then you go to swim, and then you, you see the turtle is coming close to you, looking at you, and it's like, okay, I'm here for you, I'm here for that, so yeah, yeah it's very roller coaster, <laughs> so, but at yeah. the end, yeah, I still have to do something here, I still... Yeah, the, the blue is driving me crazy. The blue is calling me, and I think I can offer so much more on this way. Amazing, amazing. So the whale shark, did you see that in the hub? No, <laughs> and charm, more in charm. And charm, okay. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you don't see, I don't think there is a lot of those. In the Red I would love to see a whale shark. We do? I, I had no idea. That's crazy. Come, next time you come, I will show you. Okay, right on. Deal. <laughs> okay, so um, this this next question I, I kind of like, uh, and it's like, okay, if, if you had one wish in the whole world, if, if you have like a, like an Aladdin, uh, you know what I mean? Like the lamp, the magic lamp, but you only get one wish, not three. What, what would that wish be? Mm. I will explain what I learned from here for living here. It's everything is about competition or collaboration. So I will see if it's possible to have a better collaboration, but everyone together to being more in harmony. Take example of the freedom of the Bedouin. They are connected with the nature, let's say. So if I have to choose only one word, harmony, to be all together. Make so to have a more harmonious relationship in general yeah. in everything we do that's yeah. lovely that's lovely uh, okay on the other hand of one wish if there's one obstacle that maybe right now you feel this is something that's preventing you from doing more or preventing you from doing what you really want maybe it's a government thing maybe maybe it's not related to Egypt I'm not sure but if there's one obstacle that you could just have the choice to just take it and throw it away. Um, what would be that the obstacle? The lack of education. This, the lack of knowledge, the lack of communication. So if we can remove this, or I don't, I don't know if it's related, but no education, having no, no much communication, and unfortunately, sometimes the culture and the religion is stopping a lot. So if people can be, I don't ask people to be more open mind, but I ask people to be more thinking by themselves. If you don't need to follow because your neighbor is doing this, you have to do this because this person is acting on this way, you have to No, ask yourself first. So how you can be more open mind, more responsible. Yeah, having better education. Okay, so education, that's, 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 I think that's a very big one, because yeah, we don't, we definitely don't in Egypt have the necessary education to um, understand the impact of, let's say, someone smoking a cigarette, throwing it. They don't, they don't understand what that can do to the whole thing. They don't understand that this could fly land in a coral, or this can be eaten by a bird, or the, I, I think with proper education, and if people truly understand that every time they do one of these actions, it affects the sea okay. and it affects the health of the land. I think people will uh, start being more empathetic 
towards that stuff and, and, and start thinking a little bit more before before acting. So, yeah, that's uh, that's on point. You're, you're right uh, for that, and by educate and showing and. It, nothing need to be forced nothing need to be like you have to do this it's just by showing the example by slowly slowly and especially here the country like have so much people like in in few generation like it's growing so fast and on the same time you have the clash that's why i was saying the culture and the religion because you have the clash of us generation a lot of people like you like a lot of my friends you travel you see the world you see many options you see how it's possible to make the change so by being you guys you can bring all those ideas and educate your friend and understand and even sometimes your family even it's not the fault of no one the the problem is it's the lack of education so here, what I understand from outside as a foreigner is like all the school or all the good school are all private. So it's not the problem of your parents to didn't show you nothing. It's the problem from the government to handle all this situation. So by having more people like you guys that seeing that, hey, this world can be better because in Europe is like this and America is like this. It's not better. We learn and we put it on the society so everyone slowly slowly by himself can make a small once again when you do small stuff it's gonna have a big impact so by recycling by showing by not using by not having extra consummation it's so much more easier and enjoyable for everyone yeah, yeah. that's that's some point um okay i kind of wanted to ask you this question in egypt what could the people do to preserve the Red Sea. And maybe this is kind of like a list, like here is 10 things we can do. Because I know it's much more challenging here to take care of the environment than it is in Canada. In Canada, we have the recycling bins, there is weekly recycling collection, I, I don't know this or that. But here, more often than not, you don't find <clears throat> places yeah. that I can just easily refill the bottles from. Like if I just, if I even have a, a reusable water bottle and I'm walking around in Dahab, where, where do I where do I fill that from if I don't if I don't have the dispenser for example uh, so I, I know it is more challenging here to be to reduce and reuse everything uh, what are from your experience what are things that people like like me can do people like things that I can tell my friends with you can tell to people things that they can small things that they can do to help uh, guard the sea or, or preserve the sea once again, I think I will keep on this point, but by the education and just by showing. So let's say here, it's very obvious, but let's say here at the end of the beach, where is Laguna, where is Laguna and people are doing kite surf and stuff. It's very common that the foreigner are going there for a run or to have a chill time. And then they will start to pick up the trash because it's everywhere because People, when they go there for gathering, let's say, I don't, it's not a judgment, but it's a fact. So when you are like five, 10, 12 Egyptians together, you are all consuming, you are all putting trash around you. And then you have foreigner or even Egyptian that they start to pick up and they start to pick up. And then you can see people are looking at you first strange and then they realize. And most of the time, some even some people who was put in the trash, they will stand up and try to pick it up and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was doing something bad. So the, if you don't know, and I think on this way, by showing the example, by having your own bottle, by recycling, by just, it's so easy, unfortunately, you can walk in the street and pick it up things. For me, people, they see me going out of the water with a lot of plastic. Sometimes I stop the dive or like I see plastic around and I go to pick up the plastic and then my student, I know they see me. So it's like, oh, okay, uh, oh, it's good. Oh, I didn't know. It's like, yeah, it should not be low to be there. So yeah, by showing the people, by doing dive cleanup, by doing beach cleanup, that it's slowly, slowly try to, even when you go to the market, and saying no to the guy to don't take these plastic bags, saying no to this person, like, no, I don't need this consummation, I don't need more than that, then slowly, slowly, once again, by education, by showing the example, 
So I think on this way, it's the best way as we can do and as the firm are doing. And even here and that have you have many organizations, ECO that have like you know, scuba seeker that they're doing dive cleanup. You have so many people that they just want to do the best. But by doing the best is by showing. It's not putting the fault of someone. It's not the fault of one person. It's the fault of everyone. So by being all together to involve everyone to do something better, yes. So showing the example, being the cool. example. Cool, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, okay, so I guess we are pretty much wrapped up. That was kind of like everything that we wanted to cover. So um, first of all, thank you so much for doing this. This was so much fun. Uh, I feel so inspired now, which, which is good. I actually feel like I have so many <laughs> ideas and, <laughs> and I kind of want to like follow the dream too that brings me to another country. And that's, and, and that was, that was an amazing part, but by all means, I was, uh, I was amazed. But before uh, because I, because yeah. it's people who you can make the change It's people like you that it's your country. So if you think about it, like I'm coming from beautiful world to enjoy this country because you have so much to offer and people like you guys making the change because you see and you, you observe and you can make this place so much better and all together we will do it. So thanks to you and, guys. And we will, of course, of course. And yeah, together we'll, I, I know for a fact that with the right education and, and with the right, um, help with the right people with the right partnerships and the collaborations we could we could really easily uh guard the sea and instead of leaving it in the way that it's kind of that's kind of going down it's going to be a hard fight it's going to take time but but at the end of the day it will be very much worthwhile uh because as you said the red sea is our biggest resource and it's something that we all need to to pitch in and, and guard it um before i let you go i kind of wanted to just kind of give you the floor you i know that you do a lot of a lot of things so tell us something you've been working on uh what it's all about how can we help you and support you um and yeah anything maybe on the matter anything that you have coming up mm. First of all, thank you. Second, though, um, following me because I have a lot of project is going on. So yeah. and slowly I will start to advertise. So <laughs> slowly, but just by doing, just by thinking, just by do you need this? Do you want this? And and the rest come to enjoy the Red Sea, come to enjoy this beauty. And if you see something all together, we can make it better. So pick up the trash in the ocean, please <laughs> come with me. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll keep picking up the trash for sure. Uh, okay, so yeah, when, when we do this part, I'll make sure we have uh, your your Instagram handle there. Uh, yeah, people follow you. You do you do get up to a lot of cool stuff. So I know this this will be uh, so one of the accounts that I really enjoy that I really enjoy always going on and see what they have. Um, I have fun to do that. I have fun to share this, and I have fun to make kind of education to. Because, yeah, sometimes it's not beautiful what I'm showing, but it's the reality. But it's reality, exactly. It's the reality. Uh, okay, awesome. Kath, this, again, has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, so happy we did this. And, uh, and yeah, before I let you go, is there anything you want to you wanna add? Shukran, shukran, shukran. Of course. Afwan, afwan, afwan. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. Oh, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, once I guess I'll, uh, I'll do that.